Welcome to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. A podcast about events, travel, and the people who love both. Find more episodes at vacationraces.com. We are back in studio with the Vacation Races and Friends podcast, talking Bryce Canyon Ultra Race Guide. Thank you guys for tuning in. Before we jump in, I want you to go over to another podcast. If you are new to vacation races, you've never done one of our events, or you want to learn a little more about how things work, you can go to our Welcome and our Orientation podcast. We have one of those that's basically made to introduce you to all events vacation races. So if you have never run with us before, make sure to go listen to that one and then jump back over here. And we're going to talk specifics about Bryce Canyon Ultra. Lyle Anderson, race director in the studio today. Howdy, howdy, Colleen. Uh, it's actually just my house, but that's okay. It's an amazing studio. It's though. an amazing studio. I mean, studio. I got these foam things right here that I I'm know. looking at. I know. We should show people some behind the scenes right? with this. Right, You got a cushion behind you there. I do. I love, you know, we have to make it so we sound really good. Right, right. We got to dampen the uh, acoustics. Very good. Yeah. Wow, you're better at sound than I am. Yeah, yeah you know, I learn. Yeah. Well, I, I'm excited about Bryce Canyon because I'm going to be there announcing the whole weekend. I I know. Finally. It's going to be Finally. so fun. Super excited to have you there. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to start, of course, with our drive through bib pickup, and then we have our starts that are going to happen. We're going to go through all of those start times and everything. We're going to be out there Friday through Sunday, so it is going to be good Memorial Day weekend. It's going to be a good one. In Bryce Canyon, I, I think it is going to be a good one. And we were talking before we went on and talking about the Thunder Mountain Trail out there on this course. My favorite. I think it's most people's favorites. Yeah, it's my favorite. Well, Bryce itself, if you've never been to Bryce Canyon, it is, there's something about Bryce. There really is. It's beautiful. It's unique. Kids love it. My kids, it's probably one of their favorite places to hike around because there's so much to see. So if you're bringing family along, if you've never been, you're definitely in for a treat. And this course is going to take you through some really beautiful terrain. It is, and it is very challenging too. It so is don't challenging. don't let the beauty fool you. Like it is gonna it is gonna push you to the limits. But so let's start out with that, Lyle. It, one of the reasons why Bryce Canyon is so challenging is the elevation where it sits. Mm -hmm. What's our yeah. what's our elevation above sea level? Um, you gotta ask me that right now. <laughs> I think I think Hatch is Hatch is sitting right around like. Hatch sits around 75, I think. Yeah, I was going to say maybe just under 7,000. Yeah. And then, and, then, uh, and then obviously there's there's parts of the course where you're going to be pushing close to 10,000 feet. Yeah. Um, which is, which is you, you feel it. You feel it really Absolutely. quick. Once you start climbing some of those grades, you're, you're like, oh man, I feel like somebody's sitting on my chest. And yeah. it's just, you know, it's just the price you pay, especially if you're coming from sea level, like you're going to, you're definitely yeah. going to feel it. Um a lot more than you probably realized. And we get that from people all the time. Like, oh man, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And it and it's because of the the lack of oxygen yeah. and the elevation that, uh, you know, it's not because it's an off day for you. It's just because like, that's, yeah, there's just less happens. air to breathe. And so knowing that going in a couple of things people can do hydrate, stay really hydrated when you're out there. That's always important on this course. Make sure you're taking in plenty of electrolytes. We'll talk about what's going to be offered on the course as well. And just slow down. I mean, right. just know that at that elevation, you and everyone else that you're with is going to slow down. It's yeah. just the way it's going to be. And, so. and just, just, I mean, the best advice I can give to anybody is just listen to your body. Like yeah. let your body tell you what it needs and give it what it needs. Like don't, don't try and push it when you're feeling like, you know, you need to slow down. You need a to bit. slow down. Yeah. 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 So it's going to it's going to be great but it will be challenging. There's challenging terrain out there. I think one important thing about Bryce too is you're up at this elevation and a lot of people envision maybe a lot of trees and things. It's pretty exposed out there. There's a lot of this course that's It, it open. can be in spots. There are there are a lot of areas where you are running through the forest and yeah. you're you're in a thick of trees and stuff and and a lot of elevation variation too where you're you're going up a hill and then you're dropping right back down and then yeah. you're going right back up another hill and so it's like Kind of a roller coaster. Sometimes, sometimes those rolling hills tend to like just eat you up. Yeah, and you're just like ready to be done. But that's where that's where your mental toughness comes into play. And, yeah. and you know you you've set out to accomplish this this goal of finishing this race, and just remember, like, hey, the finish line's not there until you get to it. So just just keep uh, keep at it. And 
I did this race several years ago. Uh, I ran the 50 miler and uh, it was a little different route that year. Right. We actually right. started start. at Crawford Pass and went mm-hmm. all the way to the, the layout was different, but basically finished at Coyote Hollow, but we went all the way through Red Canyon and all that stuff. And um, anyways, and when I did it, that was the thing. That was the thing I remember the most was just these rolling hills. Mm-hmm. I'd just be like, I drop down a hill and I'd feel like really good. And then, a, oh, there's another hill I got to climb. Short, steep. It's yep. a, there's, they're yep. not long sustained where you kind of get into a right. groove. And so it's hard, yeah. it's hard to get into that running groove that yeah. you want to really like, you know, I, I hate to say bank some time, but like I use that sure. term all the time because like when you're running ultras, you know, the thing about it is, is like, I always tell people if they're new to it, like you want to run when you can run, when it's yeah. runnable terrain, you yep. want to run, like take advantage move of that when you can move. Yep. And then, and then when it's, when it's, you know, steep, like slow it down and just take your time up there. And then when you get to some runnable terrain, make up the difference, yeah. you know, just try and try and be smart about it and stuff. And this, this course is hard to do that. So you got to be really, you got to be really smart early on, but also be be smart on the downhills because some of them are pretty steep. Yeah. But we've had so many people do this as their first hundred. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a mutual friend, Maria. She did it as as her very first 100. And we've seen a lot of success on this course as well. And people just love it. It's challenging, but it's something that you're really going to enjoy. What's fueling your race? Is nature powering your run? Nature Sunshine puts the power of nature into your hands with world-class herbs and supplements, protein powders, and active nutrition formulas designed to keep you healthy for the long haul. With nearly 50 years of expertise and an impeccable reputation for excellence in the natural health industry, we're proud to partner with Vacation Races to offer you 15% off your order. Just use promo code NSPVR at checkout. That's NSPVR. Live better, climb higher, dream bigger, dig deeper, and power your game with the power of nature at naturesunshine.com. Let's kind of dive in, Lyle, and let's talk about drive through bib pickup. That's going to take place on Friday. Yep. And how is that going to look? What's that going to look like if people haven't been to our drive through COVID-19 bib pickups? So this, this race marks a year. One year. One year ago that we did our first post COVID race. So this was the very first race that we rolled out with last year. Um, after all this COVID stuff, (laughs) (laughs) we don't even know what to call it anymore. This was the first race that we rolled out with. And so we had all kinds of extra precautions and, and, and procedures that we had kind of implemented with this race to kind of be, you know, socially distanced and COVID compliant and all this stuff. And some of those have been really good, you know, and we've, and we've definitely liked them and 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 what they've done for um being able to safely, you know, produce these events, but also just to kind of speed up the whole process. And one of them has been the drive through bid pickup. Uh it definitely comes with some limitations, but it also m- makes it to where you can stay in your car, just drive up, pick up your bib, and and leave if you want to leave. Um if you're coming to drop off your drop bags, uh you can drop those off right as you're leaving. If you want to do some shopping, we'll have our merchandise booth set up there. So you can, after you pick up your bib, you can go and park and walk over to the uh, merchandise booth and do a little shopping. We will also have a couple of uh, food vendors there that will be selling oh, some food yeah. on Friday. So if you're hungry and want to go grab, uh, we will have our, our pizza truck there and also our gourmet quesadillas. Um, nice. So like, uh, so there'll be some some options there. If, if none of those sound good to you, you can always drive down the road and see what, see what else there is to, so to offer. So a lot of people probably flying into Las Vegas right. um, in order to come to this event, if, if you're flying or if you're driving. Um, it is a little bit of a drive. You're going up into the mountains and to Hatch. Uh, right. Give us kind of a little bit of the the drive there. How are we coming there? It's off Highway 89. Right. It's not in Bryce Canyon. Don't go to Bryce Canyon right. City. Um yeah. Kind of. Yeah. You know, St. George is about two hours from Las Vegas. So like Colleen said, if you are flying into Las Vegas, you know, you're going to have a little bit of a drive ahead of you. It's probably about three and a half hours total from Las Vegas to, to hatch where we're, where we're doing the event. So just plan accordingly. Um, the, the, uh, start and finish and bib pickup is going to be at the mouth of Proctor Canyon. So, uh, we've, we've plugged all of those, um, links and uh google map uh links on our on our in our in the race guide and also on the website so you can click on those and it should navigate you right to there but obviously 
when you're driving up the road to the mouth of Proctor Canyon and you see a whole bunch of people off to the right, that's us. That's us. You're, there's, there's not going to be anybody yeah. else up there's there. There's nothing else. Last <laughs> last year, there were people that drove past it thinking that it was further up. And I'm like, no, there's nothing else there's up there. There's nothing like, else up there. That's worthy the of. course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if you go if you go up and you see a whole bunch of cars and you see some tents set up, that's us. That's us. Okay. So not too hard to get off of. Off no. of. Highway 89, it, it is really, really a beautiful area. It's it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, one, one turn off of Highway 89, and you just stay on that road all nice. the way till the mouth of Proctor Canyon. And there'll so. be signage out there, so watch right. for Vacation Races signage as yeah. well, and we'll big, get you Big right orange there. signs, so it should be easy to find. And drive through bib pickup will be great. Uh, let's talk drop bags. Drop bags are due in on Friday night. Yep, yeah, by 8 o'clock. Okay. By 8 p.m. The bib pickup will go until 7, and then drop bags will be until 8 p.m. Um, I get people every, every year always ask me, Oh, can I just bring it with me in the morning? Well, you can, but there's no guarantee we're right. going to get it to the aid station in time for you when you get there, because we're running a whole bunch of other stuff and doing a lot of different things on race morning and dropping drop bags is something that we're doing the night before. Right. It's so, not high priority for right. race morning. Yeah. We need so. to make sure the aid stations are set up and, and able to serve all of, all of you runners when you get, when you get there. So that's our number one priority. Um, and, and sometimes our aid station crews aren't coming by the finish line. Some of them might be camping up there close to the aid station or something like that. And so just, just be aware there's a lot of moving pieces to this. And yeah. so like having your drop bags there by 8 PM on Friday night, is very critical if you want them taken to the aid station. Make sure they're there in the morning. And, and like, um, we've 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 done this at, at all the events since COVID. But like, um, and if you are planning to use a drop bag, you need to make sure you bring the bag pre-labeled and everything ready to go. There's not going to be you know markers and tape and stuff there for you to use. No no communal you know bag marking sure. stuff. You you need to have it all marked. Um, before prior you get to, to the prior event. to coming. Yeah. So, yeah. And we also always suggest that you put your information inside the bag as well as outside. Of course, outside is where we want it. Bib number, you can put your name, whatever else you want on the outside. But we also recommend just putting something on the inside just in case that tape falls off or however you've marked it. Yeah. And another thing to be mindful of too, because we just did our Zion Ultra race a couple of weeks ago. And and I, I was amazed at how many people just threw, you know, some salt pills or some, you know, some scratch or something like that, just in a little sandwich bag and, and threw it out there because they wanted that taken to the aid station, which is great. Like we'll do our best sure. to get it there, but you got to be aware also that this stuff is just getting thrown in the back of a truck. Sure. So if it's on a lightweight bag like that, there's a really good chance that when they're driving down the road, it, it might get fly. blown out. Yeah. Yeah. So just be aware of that. Like it is being loaded in the truck. So if it is going to be a lightweight bag like that, you may want to throw Put something else a in there. A can of Red Bull in there yeah. or something to weigh yeah. it down yeah. just so that it's not going to get blown away. So Yeah, that's great. So 8 p.m., make sure those bags are marked up and make sure they're there. Of course, we do have camping available at this event right at the start finish, which is so cool. I mean, all weekend long, you can stay for 40 bucks Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. This is great. Not, not all weekend, all week. All, all week? All week, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so whether, whether, whether you're staying one night or the whole week, that's 40 bucks. And, uh, and, and I talked to the landowner the other day. He's going to be set up there to to uh, to collect your money. Uh, we do ask that you bring cash um, to pay for that. He doesn't. He's not set up to be able to take your cards or anything like that. So make sure that you, if you're planning to camp, that you bring forty dollars cash with you for that. And uh, yeah, it is going to. It's a big open field, so lots of room for everybody to nice. spread out and and uh, and to camp there and and it just makes uh makes for a really nice party when everybody's right there. It really does and it makes it so easy. We'll have porta potties there in the camping area mm-hmm. and everything. So it'll be it'll be great. So if you want to come and camp, come and camp with us. 40 bucks. I mean, you really can't beat that no, over a no, weekend like no. this. So that is available and that kind of takes care of our bib pickup and Friday and then as we get into race morning, we're going to kind of go through all the logistics of race morning, kind of break all this stuff down. And there's a lot of things that are, are the same for every single race. Of course, right. distances are different and there's some different signage that you're going to see out there. But let's talk first about aid stations. Lots of aid stations out there. How far apart in general are the aid stations on this course? A, a good rule of thumb is that we try to we try to not have aid stations any more than six to six to seven miles apart. Okay. So 
there was there was the, the year that I ran the fifty miler. Yes. We had aid stations that were like ten miles apart, which was too far for this course. So so we've we've shortened the distance, and then there are some uh, water only stations that are kind of Great. spanning that distance. You know, to to kind of shorten, to the kind gap. of fill in that gap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so any any aid stations that are further than that, we have stuck a water water station there between, just so that you're not having to go that far without being able to re, refill Great. your water. So. so what can we expect at aid stations as far as what nutrition's there? What electrolytes are we using? We just rolled out the Gnarly 2.0 at our Zion Ultra. Gnarly, Gnarly 2.0. Oh, Gnarly 2.0, not yeah, I got 2.0. Corrected on that. Yeah, Sorry. Gnarly, gnarly, gnarly Fuel 2.0. Uh, it's a great new product that uh, Gnarly has come out with that, that we're only using at our ultra races, and it's more of a a total meal replacement is kind of the idea behind it. It's got calories and electrolytes, right? And so it's it's uh it's great. We had a lot of people that used it um at Zion and really liked it, and so uh we're and we love Gnarly. They're a great They're, sponsor yeah, of ours. Amazing. They, we, we've been with them for for a lot of years now, and and they do an amazing job. So we're really happy to to have them and their support at, at these events. And they and they they're going to be working one of the aid stations too. Oh great. Um they always do an amazing job with you, the aid Yeah, stations. my husband was a pacer so, for Zion Ultra and he yeah. said the gnarly aid station yeah. was incredible. It was gnarly. It was gnarly. <laughs> it was it was kind of after a gnarly climb, but it was it was, it, yeah, it was, it was gnarly. gnarly and he said they did a great job. So you can expect yeah. to see gnarly out there. We'll have that on the course for you, of course, water at every aid station. But what kind of food can we expect at the aid stations? So the a, a good rule of thumb is if you're if you're running, you know, the hundred mile or the fifty mile or any of the longer distances, um, the the first the first aid station you come to is going to have your basic aid station needs. You know, you'll have your your water, gnarly uh, gels, uh, cut up fruit, some soda, some salty and sweet treats. Nothing hot or prepared as far sure. as that goes, but just more just like some, grab and goes. Some, yeah, 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 some some small stuff, and then and then uh, about uh, about East Fork for 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 those aid stations that will have more real food. You know, okay. where we'll have so we like, get a little deeper into yeah, the race. So we'll have like sandwiches and yeah. quesadillas and boiled Great. potatoes and, and things of that nature. So, okay. So um, as it goes and on, then, and then and then from there on, it'll all be that type of food. Okay, and you'll get you. some of those hot mm-hmm. options. I'm sure yeah. somebody's gonna make some quesadillas out there, yeah. some Nutella and tortillas. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have we all the have, good stuff. We always have some really interesting concoctions. One of them that I threatened to do at Zion that nobody did uh, was brown sugar and cheddar cheese quesadilla. I that, bet you that would be amazing. It, it really is. Like if you've ever been to like Cafe Rio and had like the pulled pork uh, yes. quesadilla, it tastes just like that. It's just sweet and that does Jeez. sound really good. So yeah. I used so to, maybe maybe order one of those up. At one I, of these years ago, I used to work for a wilderness therapy program, and that was like honestly one of my favorite things. I'd make an ash cake, and I'd put some brown sugar and some cheese in there, and then I fold it up almost like a pizza pocket, mm. and I'd cook that thing. And oh man, that sounds amazing. It was really good. <laughs> that sounds really, really good. good. That could f- fuel you for a whole hundred miles. Oh, I yeah. I like that idea. Just that alone. Just that alone. <laughs> if you're just eating those the whole entire time. Oh, that sounds so good. I'll see if I can talk some aid stations into making some yeah, of those. We called them we called them nitros back in the day. Nitros. So that's a good maybe I like we'll that. coin the phrase nitro. We should. At we the should have a nitro. Have your fresh nitro now. I like it. I think I think it's good. We're gonna make it a thing. We're totally making it a thing. Nerding out on data, perfecting the optimal training and nutrition plan, aiming for progression in PRs. Sound like you? Well, Gnarly Nutrition can relate. Featuring a full line of honest sports nutrition products, Gnarly provides the best nutrition possible for all types of mountain athletes. Because they offer great tasting and reputable products, Vacation Races trust Gnarly to be the on-course hydration sponsor. With the low-calorie, high-electrolyte Gnarly Hydrate for shorter races and the calorie, electrolyte, and amino acid-filled Gnarly Fuel 2.0 for longer races. Gnarly is here, taking the bonking out of your big day. Use code vacation 15 during checkout at gonarly.com for 15 percent off so let's talk through the circumstance with crew and pacers they're at bib pickup they're going to get a crew bib and a pacer bib yeah one one per runner okay and uh and and that's it you'll get one one pacer bib and one crew bib which means that you can have more than one crew and one pacer but they're sure. gonna need to change that bib back and forth and you can only have one with you at a time 
So one so, out of the vehicle at a time. Right. If, if a crew's coming to a, a crew access station at the an aid station, only one crew member is allowed out with the bib on. Yeah, and what, what we're trying to avoid, and, and you guys probably know exactly where I'm going with this, anytime you've been to an aid station that has crew access, it tends to turn into a total zoo. Yes. When everybody, you know, every runner shows up and they've got, you know, the their, family their, came their, with their entourage of 20 yeah. people, yeah. you know, and like, and they all want to come and support them and cheer them on at the yeah. aid station. Well, obviously that becomes very problematic, yeah. especially. And we love your people. Yeah, we, we, do we do love your people, but even it even makes it hard. even aside from COVID, it's problematic. Yes, so like, exactly. But under the current climate and everything yeah. that we're trying to deal with, uh, that's that's kind of why we imposed this um, this rule last year. And that's another one of them that we just like, yeah, we're going to hang on to it for a little while because it's helped it, to really it, streamline it's things to, to, to really minimize the crowding. Because what we don't want is first of all like your your crew um any any runners that have crew you know the aid stations are are already hectic enough trying yeah. to get all the runners their food and and help them as best they can without having a bunch of crew and pacers running around adding to that yeah. that chaos confusion. kind so, of yeah, yeah yeah so that's great so remember that that crew needs to have that bib on they're allowed outside of the vehicle at those crew access points only and then, of course, a pacer, if you have your pacer with you, they have to be identified with their pacer bib as well. Right, so right. just keep that in mind. You will get those at your... Now, what distances get crew and pacer bibs? Because it's not all distances. If you're doing the 30K, you're not going to no, have no. a, yeah. a so crew only, and pacer bib. Only, only the 100 miles and 50 miles are going to get pacers, and only the 100 mile or 50 mile and 60K are getting crew bibs. Okay, so just be aware if you're doing the... Yep. The 50K, you're like, wait, I didn't get those bibs. Those those aren't for your distance. We figure right. you can go 32-ish miles. Right, And, and right. we'll take good care of you. Right. And you If can... you need a crew, you should have had them sign up to run with you. There you go. <laughs> they should. Next time, they need to run with you. That's half the fun, right? You got to have... <laughs> Absolutely, to have, have some friends out there. And that's what we're looking forward to on these events is being together and still being safe and being able to have these live events. It's really, really a great thing. So... Moving on to start times. Saturday morning, Lyle. We have got five races, five different distances. Let's break it down on Saturday morning, starting with the 100-mile race. They're going to start first. Yep, 100 miles. Yeah, like Colleen said, it's going to be a it's going to be a packed morning. Lots, it is going to be a packed lots going morning. on, and we're trying to get Last year we gave a whole hour for each distance to kind of spread everybody out. And that was that was Probably a lot more time than, well, not probably. It was. It was then a lot more needed. time than we needed. Yeah. And so the way it's going to work, uh, it's going to be an open rolling start. So for the 100 milers, you're going to have from 5 a.m. to 5.20. Okay. So it's basically going to be an open rolling start for that 20 minutes. Um, so you, you can need to start, start anytime any, during that window. Anytime in that starting window. Okay. What we advise is if you're going for overall awards, mm -hmm. which overall awards are for the top three male and top three females. Okay. In each distance. We don't do age group we, awards. We, no, we don't do age okay. group, but we do top three overall okay. male and top three overall female for each distance. And so if you are planning to try and go for one of those overall spots, you need to be right there towing the line right at five o'clock. Okay. That's, that's, that's exactly the people that should be starting right at five o'clock. Okay, great. If you are, uh, if you are worried about cutoff times, um, mm -hmm. then you can start right after them. Okay. Um, and then anybody else can just start anytime in that 20 minute window. Great. Okay. Um, but just be, just be advised. Like we, 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 it seems like some people are confused by what that actually means. You know, starting, starting that 20 minutes earlier, all of our cutoff times are based off of you starting at 520. Right. So if you are actually. So you can buy yourself some, a little bit extra time but, by starting a 510. Right, you know, you're right. buying yourself ten extra minutes. Yeah, but but you're not, but you're actually not buying yourself any extra overall time on that thirty six hour. Yeah, cutoff. you still yep. only have thirty six hours to finish the race. So if you started, if you started at five ten, then you have to be finished by five ten p.m. on Sunday. Right, you've got that thirty six mm -hmm. hours. Yeah, for you're that not you're not going to get you're not going to get that all the way until five twenty. But if you're worried so. about minimum pace time, some of that might buy you a little, a few extra minutes right, there right. of of comfort while you're out on the race. Right, but remember, right. thirty six hours. That's a hard stop on the 100 miler. Right. And on the other cutoff times, we have cutoff times on every single one of them. Just refer to your race guide because the race guide really breaks down every single event with their yep. cutoff times and where all these access points are and things. So, so make sure to refer to that if you have any questions. So 100 milers, 
5 a.m. to 5.20. Next race that we're going to roll out is the 50 milers yep. after them. Yeah, so we'll have a 10-minute break between between the when we make our last call for the 100 milers and when we start the 50 milers. So the 50 milers, the lead runners are going to be starting at 5.30. And so, again, same same rules apply. If you're one of the people going for overall awards, top three male, top three female for the 50 miler, then you need to be there towing the line right at 5.30. If you're worried about those minimum pace times, you can start right after them. And then anybody else is just in that that, that window, that of, window of 20 minutes. Okay. So you have from 5.30 to 5.50. I have to say, I love the window starts. Oh, it's great. And I think a lot of our runners really like it too, because yeah. it's, it takes the pressure off of you. It's like, oh, I can just start whenever I want when it, yeah. when it doesn't feel so congested. Yep. Now keep in mind that some of the people that are worried about cutoff times might be starting ahead of you. Sure, a little bit slower so, runners. But but for this race, everybody makes a climb the first two miles up to Proctor yeah. Canyon. So even if somebody's walking up that and you need to pass right. them, it's a dirt road up to Proctor Canyon. Really wide, so, really easy. So yeah, so you're, you're going to have plenty of passing opportunities yeah. in that in that it's not gonna first get, two miles. Yeah, you're not going to be right on single track and have a, a exactly. traffic problem. So. Now, from Proctor Canyon, that's where all the distances kind of deviate. And sure. So, but, like, but again, you got some time, and it's, it's only 20 minutes. Like I said, last year we gave a full hour, which, which was more problematic because some of the people that started right at the top of the hour and, and then people that started towards the end— we're catching up to those slower runners yeah. before they got to single track, like right before they got to single track or right after they got on single track and it right and made it, a little uh, more congested. And it made it harder for them to pass. So yeah. So this this should work well. So yeah. all right. So we've got that the the rolling start. We've got the hundred milers, the fifty milers started. Sixty K is next up. Yep. On our start time, sixty K starting at six to six twenty. Yep. And that's gonna follow by the five Kers from six thirty to six fifty. I'm sorry, the fifty Kers. Did I say five K? I think I said yeah, five. Yeah, yeah. I think I said five K. No. 50k very big Close difference enough. very big difference and then the 30k starts going to be 7 to 7 20 right. 30 so right. we've got those guys starting for the 30k so that everybody should be started and by i think i did I, and i did i did go a full 30 minutes for the, for the 30k okay. just because it's the last distance yeah. and because the the numbers are higher for that one so, so it gives a little more wiggle room so there. i gave okay. i gave a full 30 minutes for that one but all the others are just a 20 minute window the race guide says 30 minutes, but that's between distances. And yeah. so um, just be aware that it, it is only a 20 minute uh, starting window for each distance. Great. So. All right. So start should be great. I I have to say, I remember when we ran uh, Antelope Canyon those few years back and we started way back from everybody right. because we didn't want to get in the crowd and we went to the right. bathroom after the starting gun and we did a rolling start and it was so much better. Right. I right. mean, to start a long race like that, I, I really think is the way to go. Well, because at Antelope Canyon, if you remember, yes, like we you went cross, straight up. You cross the, the highway and yeah. you're just stuck waiting for. If people you remember, to we kind of went off course. If you remember correctly, we bought ourselves a little extra time. Bought ourselves a little extra time because we weren't paying attention. But whatever. I don't know. I don't know if we bought ourselves. We just <laughs> stalled a little bit. Is all. Uh, let's talk about off course and let's talk about <laughs> course markings while we're on that. What are right. you marking the course with? So all all the course can be marked with pink ribbons. Okay. Uh, our pink markers. If you've ran any of our races before, they're all they're all the same. So you'll, you'll recognize the the pink ribbon, the flagging tape with the bird scare tape and the reflective tape on our little clothesline clips. Um, they're they're really easy to see uh, during the day, especially in a green forest. Yeah. That's, they, they, the pink really stands out. In yeah, it contrasts all really well. But also, like at night, the reflective tape that we have on there. It really it's it going to really, pick up those lights. Yeah, that it have. picks up it picks up the uh, the headlamps really well. So, and it is going to be dark when when we start, especially the hundred milers. You're going to need your lights on, and you'll have to. Yeah, at least till, at least till Proctor Canyon. But the nice thing is, is you're going to come back through Proctor Canyon after you do your first fifty uh, ish miles, and so, so you, you know, drop if you want if you want to drop your light and then pick it up before you head out towards. Uh, towards Blubber Creek and, yeah. and heading out towards Crawford Pass, then you can do that. And uh, you can just drop it in your drop bag and then pick it up again before you before you head out. So yeah, it makes it kind of nice. Yeah, that is kind of nice. So you watch for the flagging tape out there. What about signage as far as the do not enter kind of places? How is that going to be marked so people understand? So anywhere, the, the way we mark our courses is we, we generally try to put the, the markers, you know, in some pretty obvious places. Um, if it's If it's on a trail that, that uh, there are no intersecting trails that you could deviate. We may space them out a little bit further just because sure. there's, no there's place nowhere to go. else yeah. for you to go. 
but anywhere where it's going to be confusing or there's a lot of junctions, we'll mark those junctions really heavy with markers. So you can always just kind of follow the pink markers. And if there's uh, an, an, you know, a trail that has several intersecting trails, we'll use some arrow signs and also some wrong way signs just to let you know that like, okay. you know, if you see a wrong way sign, don't step over it. Yes. That's generally a good rule. And of if thumb. you do, and you try and get mad at me, I'm going to say, why did you step <laughs> over that wrong way? sign? Can we give a shout out to Mike Versteeg? <laughs> He's going to be doing course operations Mike, on this one. Mike is amazing. And Mike can put a lot of miles on his leg. He can. And he marks the crap out of these. He does. He does, he does. a good job. And, and his, and his, uh, and his crew that helps him does yeah. an amazing job yeah. too. So yeah, if you see Mike, and he'll be there at the start to kind of give you guys a little little rundown on what you can expect. Mike's not a man of many words, He's but not. he uh, but he also doesn't hold any punches back either. He'll tell you exactly what you can expect. So he's he's um, a man of many miles, though. He is a man of many miles, and he and he does it all, and he'll he'll do it all multiple times before and after the event. I so, know like, he's he's incredible. You so. guys, you guys are in good hands. He yeah. really does mark the course really well, and. Uh, and and he takes a lot of pride in it. Yeah. So. No, it's great. I'm glad. I was glad to see that he was out there doing course operations for us again. Mike's a great guy, and we're always glad to have him out on course, helping you guys out and make sure we're all marked up on that. So we got you all marked up. There's a couple of junctions as I was looking through all the different um, distances. You know, where there some distances go one direction, other distances go the other direction. How is that going to be marked? How are, how would he, if I'm a hundred miler? How am I going to know when I get up? to the top of Proctor Canyon, which way I'm going to go. So the, there will be signage to kind of point you where to go. A lot of that really kind of, I hate to say it needs to be something that you take personal responsibility oh, for, absolutely, but, yeah. but it really is something that you sure. need to take personal responsibility for because there are multiple distances going yes. different directions. Yes. So you really don't want to just follow the person in front of right. you, which we all understand that happens. Yeah. So we will have the trails marked with which direction you need to go. Um, but if, if you're wondering, like we should have an extra person there that's directing you where to go as well, but it's a lot of people going in and out of there. So we might miss somebody. So that's where I say you really need to take some personal responsibility and just make sure that you know where you're going. And if you're questioning anything, ask somebody at the aid station. The aid station uh, workers are going to be very, uh, very capable of of knowing the the route. We got one of our favorite aid station uh, workers working Proctor Canyon, Rob Rich. And oh, Angie Rob and, and, and they, Stephanie. Yeah, That's going to be awesome. They, they do a great job there. So, so good. again, you're in good hands. He'll, he won't lead you astray, but, yeah. but if you have any question, just make sure that you ask, you know, it's, it's always better to just double check before you go yeah. the wrong direction. So. Well, and, and really handy thing is the Avenza maps that right. we have for this. So right. Avenza is an app. You can download it. You don't need GPS. I'm sorry. It runs by GPS. You don't need service right. you in order to use it. airplane mode and it'll, yeah. and it'll just take so you right where you download go. those Avenza maps. How do they find the Avenza maps for this year? What's the search on that? So if you, if you go to Avenza, A-V-E-N-Z-A, download the app. If you've ran any of our races before and you've used it, you've already got it and sure. stuff. But the thing that you'll need to make sure that you do is, and, and, and again, kind of going back to what Colleen said earlier, really reference the race guide because some of the uh, some of the maps are very specific in how they need to be uh, searched when you're trying to download those maps. Um, so like for the 100 miler and, and, and the 50 miler and all those, like there, there's very specific, um, right? So, like the hundred miler, you need to type in Bryce Canyon one hundred mile ultra. Like right. you need all those words in there in order to pull up that Bryce Canyon fifty mile ultra. Bryce Canyon sixty km is what you're going to search. Bryce Canyon fifty km ultra. Bryce Canyon thirty km. So look at your race guide that's on page eighteen there. Yep. Um, but that events map that can be a lifesaver. Uh, right. when you're out there. And right. especially if you have any questions, it's so easy to pop that map open, see your dot and see the dots where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So it's, it's really uh, going to be helpful. It's, it's, uh, it's saved my bacon more times than, yeah. than I like to like to admit, but like, you know, what did we do before technology, Lyle? I don't know. I was uh, talking about this with my wife the other day. I was like, do you remember when we used to, before we had like GPS and we used to go to a gas station and have to ask the gas station for directions and yeah. we'd have to buy maps and when you were traveling out of town, it was somewhere new. It was I like, had the Rand McNally in the back seat in order to pull it yeah, out. And, yeah, and that was just that was just common. Like yeah. I feel like if you were hired to work at a gas station, you had to have good navigation skills. Where like, you were going. Because you were gonna be getting you were gonna be getting pressed. To, Lots to of know questions. Everything. So you guys brush up on your navigation skills, get that events a map so that you have it. 
And again, page 18 on the race guide is going to help you out with that. Okay, so we've got the maps. we got everybody on course. Let's kind of talk about, and as you come into some of these aid stations, you might see some timing checkpoints. Uh, timing checkpoints with timing mats that are going to allow for a split time that you need to make sure to cross over. You've got to cross over these mats. Yeah, because if we have a timing checkpoint there, we're we're counting on you to cross that timing mat to make sure that you're not cheating and cutting the yeah. course short. So, so yeah, if you see a timing mat, and again, reference the race guide because we do have certain certain aid stations that are going to have time checkpoints. And and the reason why we don't have them at all of them is because we don't have data. We don't yeah. have a way to collect data. <laughs> so like if if it's out in the middle of nowhere, it doesn't really do us any good to put a timing checkpoint there because we're not going to know whether you cross that timing mat until we go and collect the timing mat itself and download all the data. Whereas with the ones that have uh, data, then we can just download it and we can upload it right to the website. And so Super easy. any of your family and friends can, can look at the results. And, uh, as long as we have data, then we can, we can put live checkpoints on there. Make stuff, sure we so. have those. So watch, so watch for those timing checkpoints, make sure to cross over them when you have them. Speaking about your spectators, race joy. I used race joy a lot with the Zion ultra. I, I said a few minutes ago that my husband was outpacing a friend who was doing his first hundred miler race joy worked awesome. Yeah, it was great. I was amazed how many hundred milers actually used the race joy and, and had it going like the whole time. Like yeah. it was, it was impressive. Uh, keep in mind, race joy is going to drain your battery yes. faster. And so like you're going to most likely, if you're planning to use race joy, you're going to want to bring like a portable phone charger or something with you that you can throw in your pack just to plug it in from time yeah. to time. And that's what our friend did because yeah. you, what you need to know about race joy, like a Venza, it is an app. Right. So it's a third party app. You need to download that. When you start your race, you're going to open that app and you're going to press start just like you would for Strava or right. any of or your Garmin or something. You're going to start that app and then that's going to allow your spectators to go on, search your name, and then your little bubble will pop up wherever right. it's at. It, it really works well. It, it's it's honestly one of the most impressive things for me as a race director to go into the timing trailer and have them pull up the, the Race Joy app and just look at all the dots of all my runners where everybody is. Yeah. I, I know exactly where everybody's at. In fact, at Zion ultra, we had one lady that went the wrong way. And you watched course. her bubble just, <laughs> and I, so I looked her up I yeah. looked her up, and I called her and I said, you're going the wrong way. She's like, how cool is that? She's though? like, I know I'm going the wrong way. I'm doing this on purpose because I, these views are so amazing. I wanted to see oh, more. Isn't that funny? So she's just that like, funny. thank you for checking on me. But like, that's awesome I, though. I but mean, like, that's how cool it is. It's yeah. Like, I can see everybody. And but if you again, go off course, I know. If you don't use it, if you don't start it, we don't see it. Yeah. So it is up to the runner to use it. It is a battery drain. Make sure you've got a little extra battery. Play. Most ultra runners, I feel like they have their little battery right, sticks right. and are able to use that. And so, and the other thing that it does do, talking about go that girl going off course, it will tell you if you're off course too. Yeah. So like it, it, it has, you know, a certain, certain leeway, you know, on, on and off the trail. But if you get too far deviated from the course, it'll say you're off course. Give you a little. Just so that you're like, oh. Oh crap! I'm I'm yeah, and it'll tell you you're going off course. Such so, great I mean, technology! So yeah. use it while you're out there. I mean, we, it's it's great that we have this kind of stuff because before you just didn't have that. And yeah, to, you know, you just hoped and prayed you that didn't everybody get lost, so. that everybody came <laughs> back, and now we can actually call you if you're out right, there. So right. very very cool. It is limited service. We should say that sure. very limited phone service. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter what phone you have. As you get to the higher points, you might have a little bit of service, but it is yeah, very from, limited. From, from Blubber Creek and Canab Creek aid stations, like you're kind of on the rim right there. And this is on the 100 mile. On the 100 mile, about. yeah. So if you get out to the rim, like right. at the aid station might be iffy, but if you actually walked yes. out to the rim, yeah. you could make a phone call and it would probably go out at those two. Crawford Pass and Straight Canyon, they're kind of down in a bit of a hole. So you're not going to get anything. there. Yeah. And then, uh, and then East Fork Aid would have uh, Blue Fly would have connect, uh, data or a little bit of cell phone coverage. Service. Yeah. Yeah. East Fork should, Coyote Hollow should, and Red Canyon Aid Station for the 50 miler and the 50K, it should as well. And then Hillsdale. And then, of course, the start and finish line has, has great coverage there. Yeah. Well. So just just be aware of that. You may not have great service while you're out there. Airplane mode is always a good idea. Right. And to save that battery. So cool. All right. So we've got everybody using all the technology that they need to. Let's talk about Grim Reaper and minimum pace times and how that's going to work. Every distance has different Grim Reaper times. Right. 
But how does that work? Is there literally Mike Versteeg walking with a, a hood and a sickle? We've done that. We've done That'd that. That'd be so fun. That would We've be so fun. We've done that. I have the Grim Reaper costume. It's hanging in my costume. And I've, and I've done that before where I've actually been at the aid stations to enforce the Grim Reaper times. Um, I don't generally make it to all of the Grim yeah, Reaper times. Yeah, I was times. saying, you're so probably somebody, doing some other things. So, so. somebody somebody's going to be there to enforce the time, whether it's the aid station workers or somebody from the staff ourselves there to enforce it. But uh, for the 100 miler, there are three Grim Reaper times. The first one's at Proctor Canyon Second Pass, which is mile 35.4. So like... You before you head out to uh to head out to the Crawford Pass to the long around, kind of that long straight mm-hmm. away that you have. Yeah, yeah, you, ha- you have to be past the aid station by 4 30 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. So um that and that's absolute. Like the Grim minimum, Reaper times minimum pay these are yeah. the, the gate closes a second after it's it's done. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, like it and that and that's you have to be left the aid station by that time you can't be arriving by that time. okay you have to have left the aid station yes. by that time because okay. you can't you can't say oh it's it's i have to be to the aid station by 4 30 no you have to have left the aid station yeah. because I've, I've had there's been some confusion sure. in some of the races where people are like well i made it to the aid station by that time like yeah but then you you honestly, spent 15 minutes you at could, the aid station. you could have hung out there for an hour just yeah like. <laughs> yeah so it's make sure you're to the aid station and out of the aid station before these Grim Reaper times yep. and these minimum pace times. Yep. And then the next, the second Grim Reaper time is at 4.30 a.m. on Sunday at the Crawford Pass turnaround. Okay, that's at the tail end mm-hmm. up on so the high point. 12, hour, 12 hours between those two Grim Reaper times, but you have to have left uh, Crawford Pass and started heading back towards the finish line by okay. 4, 4.30 p- a.m. on Sunday and then the last, um, the last Grim Reaper time is at Straight Canyon Second Pass um, Aid Station at 8:20 a.m. Sunday. And from Straight Canyon, there's no more crew access between um, between there and the finish line. And so that's why those two those two Grim Reaper times are so close to each other right there because those yeah. are the two that we actually have crew access at. So if yeah. if you are unable to um, make those Grim Reaper times. We have a way to extract you. If, if if you don't, then it's it's a little bit more problematic to get you if you make it all the way to Canab and and right. Creek. Yeah, it's it's going to be really right. hard. And that's obviously we can because we have to set up races. Sure, so like we have sure. Access, but they're they're more rugged. It's definitely a lot harder to get to. It's going to take so, some time. So yeah, if you if you do decide that you're dropping at one of those, you're going to have to be very very patient to for us to get a vehicle there because the 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 drive time between some of these aid stations is is not, you know, 30, 40 sure. minutes. It's, it's it's an hour These plus. are rugged roads. They are backwoods. Sometimes it's, it's two be, hours that yeah. you might be waiting. So, so it's going to take some time. So, so be smart. Yeah. So if you're even questioning whether or not you're going to be good at Straight Canyon, like if you feel like you're fading pretty fast and you're at Straight Canyon at 8.15 yeah. and you're debating on whether to try and push to Canab, if you're if you're questioning it, you should not go. Yeah, like that's because a good rule because of thumb. because what I'm afraid of is you'd get to Canab and be like, I can't go any further. Yeah, and and then you're going to be waiting for a while for somebody to extract you, or you're going to get cold and hypothermic, and we don't we don't want we don't that. want so, that. So yeah. be be really, and I think with any with anything any ultra that we're doing, an aid station is a great time to take that stock of yourself. Right, right. Do that personal inventory. How am I doing? How am I feeling? What do I need? Where am I going? Because you, you know, we do our very best. We have staff, we have medical staff, we have people that want to help you out, but you can help the whole race out by just making sure you're really smart in your decision making. Yeah, we had we had a runner at this race the year I ran it that she left the aid station and she made it maybe a half mile past the aid station and decided that she, she, she couldn't go any further. And so then we had to go and carry her on our backs out of there which because there was no other way but, to extract her but we had to get somebody there to do it first yeah and which was which was um which was scary for her and for us because it's like that was something that should never have happened in the first place right. she should have she should have stopped before she stay at the, the aid station. station yeah so so really take your personal <clears throat> inventory when you do that okay so those are grim reaper times for the hundred mile race what about for the 50 mile race? We only have one Grim Reaper time for the 50 mile race. Correct. And it's at Red Canyon second pass. Okay. At 6 30 PM on Saturday. Okay. All right. So same thing. Like you have to be past out of there. Get out of the there aid station. on your second pass. So you, okay. uh, you have to have already done the Red Canyon loop and heading back towards 
Hillsdale Aid Station. Okay, perfect. And then as far as the 60K course, we have minimum pace times on 60K course. We don't have a Grim Reaper time. So could you explain right. the difference between those, Lyle? Yeah, so all aid stations have a minimum pace time, and that's just based on what time the aid station is scheduled to close. Okay. So not saying that it is going to close exactly at that time, but that's what time it's scheduled to close. To so start like, shutting down. Yeah, because that, that's that. And so And that's why if you're coming in behind the minimum pace times, there's a really good chance that by the time you get to the next aid station, there may not be an aid station there. Yeah. Which is why, even though it's not a Grim Reaper time, we may pull you just because yeah. we can't allow you to continue. There's going to be no aid. services for yeah. you. Yeah. So like if you're coming in 20 plus minutes behind the minimum pace time for your safety and for all, all of our sake, like you may be pulled from the course because you're, even though it's not a Grim Reaper time, like it's, it's, it's up to race officials whether or not you're going to be allowed to continue if you're behind those minimum pace right. times. Okay, so. great. So that's the difference there. 60K, check your minimum pace times. You can check page 11 for all of your minimum pace times on all of your aid stations there. And then, of course, we have the 50K. Again, minimum pace times on there. No Grim Reaper times. And the same goes for... Well, no, the 30K actually does have a Grim Reaper because yep. their course is a little bit different. Right, and that's right. why you're seeing a Grim Reaper t- time on the 30K course and you're not on the other 50K and, th- right. and 60K because they're on the same course as our 100 milers. Right. The, the 30K has an aid station that only the 30K goes through. And that's yeah. our Badger Creek aid station. And like I said, it only the only the 30K goes through that aid station. And so that's where the Grim Reaper is going to be. And that's at mile eight. I just, in fact, I just noticed looking at that, that's actually an error. That needs to be 1050 because our minimum pace time is 1048. So our okay. Grim Reaper time is three minutes slower than minimum pace time, which is not accurate. So that's going to be 1050. So. Okay. So 1050 is going to be our Grim Reaper <laughs> yep. time yep. on the Badger Creek. This is for the 30K only. Yep. No one else goes through this Badger Creek aid station. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Only cool. 30K. So very, very, it's a kind of a different scenario on the 30K there. So drop bags, things like that. If you drop your drop bags off Friday by 8 p.m., those drop bags are going to be taken to the different locations where you've, when you get, I love the pictures from Zion Ultra with all the drop bags. It really was so fun. If you watched Vacation Races and Ultra Adventure, their their social media posts, they had all of the drop bags were sectioned into the different aid stations where right. they were going. And that's right. what we can expect here right. as well. Right. So if you have something that needs to go to the Proctor aid station or the Red Canyon aid station or the Blubber aid station, you're going to put it in those different places yep. in order yep. to have it. So the, those access, when you have access to the drop bags, that's where you need to drop them off in the correct spot. And, so that and like Colleen said earlier, like having your bag properly labeled is going to help everybody because yes. some of the bags, just like I said earlier, they all get thrown in the back of a truck to go to the aid stations. And so um, if your bag is just got your name on it and then you've got in really tiny print, you know, you know, Blubber Creek aid right. station and, and we can't uh, see hundred it. mile, you know, yeah. it's like it, it might just get passed around. And it, and it always amazes me how many of these, these bags at the end of the race get overlooked by their own runners trying to find their bag. Right, they like, can't find they've it. literally stepped over their own bag 10 times trying to find, I can't find my bag. And it's like, it's right here. It's right here. You stepped over it. Like, I mean, times. they, they might be a bit like glucose, you right, know, <laughs> right. but, but what I was getting at is like, do some things to make your bag jump out at you. Yes. So like Tie I've something seen, on it. Yeah. So I've seen people use different colored, you know, duct tapes, yeah. you know, and which, which is, probably less of a help anymore these days because everybody's doing that so right like, somebody's got green fluorescent duct tape it's kind well, of like the luggage pickup at the airport right, right. you know everybody's got a black bag so try to differentiate yours but if you bit. but if you have a different type of bag yes also that'd so be helpful be in mind of that like so a lot of people will put things in ziploc bags which there's nothing wrong with putting them in ziploc bags but if three fourths of the other participants right. are putting things in That's ziploc, a lot bags, of ziploc then bags like and and you put pink tape duct tape on yours and 10 other people put pink duct tape on, you're going to be looking at all their bags, you know, trying to figure out which one's yours. So uh, anything you can do to try and make it stand out Differentiate those. That would be really helpful. It'll make it easier for you and for us. And the other thing talking about before we move on past drop bags, that's very critical is if you want your drop bag brought back to the finish line after you've used it, make sure you put it in the return to finish pile. Because if you don't- In the I am done, I'm not coming back here pile. Because if you don't do that and- and then you come to the finish line wanting your bag. Well, it's going to be hanging out at the A station until it closes because we don't know that you've been through there. Right. Or you haven't been through there. 
funny story from Zion Ultra as well with our friend who was doing his first 100 miler. His wife, he had two passes at the Virgin BMX aid station for Zion Ultra. And she got him through, got his bag for him. And then she took his bag and put it in the car and drove oh. away. And he came back on the second pass. So remember oh. if you have multiple <laughs> passes at an aid station because... Tell your crew. <laughs> yeah, they they might need to remember or you're not going to have those clean socks and, right. and the, the lube that you really wanted coming poor, on the second. Poor Judd. I know, he didn't have it. And she felt really terrible about <laughs> that too. But you know what? He survived and it was just fine because the aid station was well stocked with right. everything that right. he needed. He just and didn't so, have his clean socks. He just didn't have his clean socks and yeah. his toes are, yes, terrible right now. But they're fine. He's <laughs> got a belt buckle and it makes everything right. better right. so all right so we've got all that spectators lyle talk to me about spectators we know that crew access how that's going to work one person out of the car at a time so really this is not spectator friendly. no 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 and and spectators are are not um are not really um encouraged anywhere on course uh, yes. The best place to, place to spectate is at start and finish line. Because we cannot come and extract your Toyota Corolla from some of these right. no. places. It's not going to happen. Yeah, please do not try it. <laughs> and if it's not, and, and along that same line, if it's not a, if it's not an aid station that has, that offers crew access and your crew does try to go to that aid station, then your runner, your runner's going to be disqualified yeah. because you're not playing by the rules. Right. Like, like everybody it, has to play by the same rules. Yeah. So like if we say there's not crew access at Canab or Blubber Creek and you decide, well, I'm above the rules and your runner tries to get there and, and, you know, we'll be paying attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, please, because just, we have to, it puts a yeah. huge burden on to other participants right. and we don't want to do that. Right. And, and it's, there's a reason there's no crew access. Yeah. The roads are horrible. And like, like Colleen said earlier, like, if you are trying to drive a Toyota Corolla up a yeah. four wheel drive only access road and you get stuck and then we can't get aid in and out of the aid station because you're blocking it. Well, now you've created a much bigger problem. Right. So, right. So, so, so just stick to that. No, it's not spectator friendly. Have your spectators use race joy. It's great. Even right. from a distance, you can be involved. You can even send cheers to the people right. on right. race joy. I mean, use, use that app. And that's just, it's the reality of, of this course and, right. and how it is on that. So don't worry about that. But finish line, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to be there yeah. at the finish line. We're going to have some fun. We're going to really celebrate. Talk about awards because there's always somebody who heads out on the 50 miler and they end up dropping to the 60K. How does how does that work? So anybody who draw so whatever race you start is the race you need to finish to get an official qualifying time. Okay. So if you start the that distance, mm -hmm. yes. so if you start the hundred miler, um, then to get an official finish time, you need to finish the hundred miler. You're not going to get a fifty mile time, right? Right. So you can't. There's no dropping down in the middle of the course. Okay. Like if you, but if you choose to drop down and just do the fifty mile course, um, at Coyote Hollow first, first. Well, no, you can't because you're going to miss the first. Anyways, if you decide to drop down after you, you the after course. you finished fifty miles then you can still claim a 50 mile award a um, finishers finisher award. award you won't get an official time your yep. time is going to be listed as a DNF. as a dnf but like but you can still claim cuz you've you've covered the 50 mile distance sure. so sure. you can still claim a 50 mile award um and same for the other distances if you're doing the 60k and or if you're doing the 50 mile and you and you've completed a 60k uh distance before you dropped out then you're not going to get a finish time for the 50 miler but you could get a a finish award for the 60K, 60K. and so okay. on and so forth Great. for the 50K and the 30K as So well. if you want to buckle, you got to finish the there 100 is no miler. There is no lesser distance for the 30K, though. So if you don't yeah, finish the 30K, true. then you just don't get an award. We don't have 5K awards yeah, at this yeah, one. Yeah. So yeah. you'll have to come run another event with yeah. us in our National Park Series right. to get one right. of those. So yes, you want that buckle, we got to have you come across the finish line for the 100 miler. And we expect a lot of you to come across the finish line. It, it is going to be great. Can we talk about weather really fast at Bryce Canyon, because weather, the year that you did it, it was really hot Yeah, that yeah. year. Um, it can get hot up there, but it can get cold up there as well. Yeah, and, and when Colleen says it was really hot, it was in the mid-80s. But at that at that elevation, the, yes. the air is thinner. It's drier. Mm -hmm. um, Sun is very hot Yeah, and up like there. she said earlier, it can be exposed. And so even though it was in the mid-80s, it felt like it was in the mid-90s. Like yeah. it, felt, it felt very hot. And so... Just be aware that uh, sometimes, sometimes the the wind can pick up too, which mm -hmm. which which you know can can wreak havoc. So, um, 
But it gets very cool overnight if you're but, doing the hundred miler. Yeah, but but it, there's a huge temperature swing yes. up there on that on that uh, um, plateau. The the I mean I've I've been through there in the middle of the day where it's been in the summertime almost 100 degrees. Yep. And then below freezing at night. Yeah. Like it just huge temperature swings. So yeah. Just be prepared for that. Like you know, in your drop bags and stuff, especially for any aid stations you're going to be going through. And during the overnight hours, yeah. like you're going to want some warm, some dry, warm clothes. You're going to want to put yeah. some warm layers that you can throw on, uh, once it gets dark. Yeah. So, so definitely we don't, of course we don't know the weather. We don't know what mother and nature is going right. to do for us, but you know, it can, it can get warm. The sun feels warm. Sunscreen is really important at yep. this elevation, especially if you're going to be out all day long. Right. Um, you definitely will get burned really quickly out there and right. we'll have some sunscreen and things like that at the aid stations, but uh, just, just be aware of that. And I find even when I'm running, I get burned easier when I'm running. I don't know if it's the sweat. I don't know if it's the way I'm, I'm yeah. not sure what it is, but just take care of yourself out right, there. So right. it's, it's really important. Now, if somebody does need to drop Lyle, you know, their, their race is ended. They're not going to be able to finish. What is that procedure? What does that look like in order to drop and, and make sure that people are accounted for and they're taken care of? So when you, if you decide to drop, you need to make sure and report it to the aid station captains when you get to the aid stations and, and you'll need to hand them over your bib so they can call in the, call in the bib number and make sure that we account for, for, you know, all the runners that are still on course. Cause we want, we don't, we don't want to have, you know, somebody that we think's on course Yeah. that. Well, you'll send somebody out going looking for them really, we really dropped. And, and where this really becomes a problem is that any of the aid stations where we have crew access and you decide to drop and you just go and get in the car with your yeah. crew and you don't tell anybody. And so near the end of the race, we're like, well, we haven't accounted for this person yet. And so then we have to call you and be like, are you still out there? Oh yeah. no, I quit 60 miles ago. Right. You know? like, right. Oh, well, thanks for letting us know. Yeah. So make sure to turn those bibs in. That's the, the appropriate dropping procedure. Medical, we're going to have some basic medical needs at all the aid stations. Yep. Um, so you'll have some of those little items and things that you'll need for any, I mean, cuts and scrapes that happens right. at all ultras. It's part of ultra running. Um, we'll have that kind of stuff. Of course, some lube and things like that if you need it. But uh, aid stations are your best friend. Those volunteers are going to be awesome. We have some of the best and they're going to take good care of you. So it's it's going to be great. Anything else you can think on the course, Lyle, that, that we should hit before we Kind of move on to this Bryce Canyon area. Um, no, I think we've covered it pretty well. I mean, Colleen was just talking about medical at the aid stations. We will have uh, a few select aid stations on the course where we will also have, um, you know, some medical personnel there just to just to make sure that you guys are in good hands and stuff. And um, for the hundred miler, we'll have them at uh, um, Crawford Pass and East Fork and Blubber Creek. Nope, not Blubber Creek. Um, Crawford Pass and East Fork, so that would be the same for the for the fifty milers, right. and then uh, and then also we'll have them at Red Canyon. Okay, um, for, for the, the fifty milers, fifty k. Yeah. So and the sixty k, we'll go through that area yep. as well. Yep. So yep. okay, so medical on course as well. And then of course we'll have them at the finish line as well. Yeah. So if if, uh, if if there's a need for anything, you know, you, you, when you finish your race, if you're feeling dehydrated or whatever, you know, definitely go step into the medical tent. Chad is our medical director, and he's awesome. He does a great job, and uh, and he takes good care of our runners. He'll be, he'll be ready for you. So. Yeah, it'll be great. But no, we're not going for the medical tent. We're going to stay no. out of the medical tent because no. we're going to stay hydrated. We're going to stay up on those electrolytes. We're going to exactly. keep eating the whole entire time. We're going to stay warm and we're going to wear a hat and wear a sunscreen and have a great time right. out there. Right. It's going to be a great adventure. My question for you, you've done this course. Would you use poles? Absolutely. Everybody always I, asks that question. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't, I not would, even a I, question. I would start with them too. Okay. I wouldn't even put them in a drop bag. We're I like our right Zion. Away. There's some certain parts where you would want poles, but here at Bryce, it's a little bit different scenario. Yeah. No, like we were saying earlier, there's so much up and down variation yeah. and some of the downs are really steep and yeah. having, having those poles just to kind of help brace yourself yep. so you don't fall and tumble down the hill, like is it's pretty important. Yeah. So poles, then, poles, a great addition. Yeah. Um, probably that you want. And I mean, right. the poles these days are so light. They're light yeah. as feathers. They're right. amazing. And yeah, so some of those black diamonds. Yeah. The, the carbon Z carbon, poles. They're yeah. they're amazing. I think everyone has the carbon Z poles. And yeah. here's the thing too: if you do have carbon Z poles, put your name on them. Right. Like wrap some of that duct tape around them so that you know that they're yours. Because right. there tends to be lots of poles at right. aid and, stations. Well, yeah. And people like lean them against the table, and then they're like, yes. wait. 
Wait, are these mine or are these yours? I know. It happens every time. It happens every time. So uh, just make sure you you look out for that. But Bryce Canyon is a spectacular area. This is an awesome course. And I feel like, Lyle, you know, since you've been race director of this event, you've really honed in on a great course here. It's changed a couple of times. It's first iterations and things like that. But I feel like you've really come down to some awesome trail that yeah. you're putting people out on that's well supported by aid stations and really is is a treat people really love this event it, it's a really good one in it and it it does it it is a challenging course to be able to service all the aid yeah. stations because of the nature of how spread out it is like for us to get to crawford pass like we have to do a big roundabout right. loop basically to get to it and so it's it, there's no there's no straight line no there. easy way no. but there's no easy way to a hundred mile finish line either nope, absolutely it's, it's just plugging on and plugging on and keeping going. So we we love to have you guys, and we're so grateful that you're going to be with us. If you're going to be in the area and you're looking for some things to do, there's plenty of suggestions in the race guide um, of different trails you can do. And really, the best thing you can do is download the Spark Plus app. That's another third-party app that we use that gives you all sorts of things that you can do in these areas when you're visiting. So it's the Spark Plus. You can find this in your race guide as well. Page like 22 and 24 has some great information on that and things to do because you're not going to run out of things to do in the Bryce Canyon area. No. Not at all. You can even swing through Zion on the way home. It's going to be busy though. <laughs> oh yeah, Zion's going to be busy if if you're trying, trying to get there. That's what I love about Bryce. It's not quite as busy as Zion is. So um, it's good stuff as far as that might goes. be on Memorial Day weekend. Oh, right absolutely. On. I mean, everybody loves to get up to the mountains oh, yeah. when it's getting warm and things like that. But you guys are in for a treat. We've got great camping at the start finish line available for you if you need it. If you do have any questions, Lyle, what's your email that they can reach out to? Lyle, L Y L E, at vacation races. Are you sure it's not La Hile? You don't want to spell it. No, any well, other way. If, you're, if you're at Wendy's, if you're at Wendy's, that's how they spell your they, name. They, they may misspell my name, but <laughs> it is L Y L E. Lyle at vacationraces.com. Of course, info at vacationraces.com is our customer service. So, um, yeah. What else do you got for me? So one of the thing we, we started to talk about it a little bit earlier. And as I'm scrolling through the race guide, I just wanted to make mention of it. Uh, on your bib, you're going to have two tearaway tabs on the bottom. Oh, yeah. We've one is those. for your race shirt, which mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about that. We're, we're going to take that when we when we give you your bib and hand you your shirt. But the other one says meal ticket on it. And oh. like I was talking about earlier, yeah, like we're, we're going to have food some, trucks. we're going to have some food trucks there. And so that meal ticket is redeemable for a meal from, from either of those. And you can Perfect. either, you can, you can redeem it at any time during the event, whether you want to do it Friday during the bib pickup or Saturday or Sunday. Oh, great. Um, so okay. you can just pull off that meal for ticket. For people tab. who are camping, Lyle, is that, are they going to be like going all night long? No, I mean, what's the time no, frame for these trucks? It's really up to them, but, okay. but what I told them to plan on is, is till 8 p.m. Okay. Night, that's so. good to know. Okay. Except for on Sunday. They, they'll, sure. They'll, they'll be done they'll because the race is going to end at 520. Right. And right. so, okay. Yeah. They'll be and done. I'm not sure when they'll, they'll stick around on Sunday, but, uh, okay. but yeah, but they'll, they'll be there and, uh, and they do a great job. They, they make good food. So if, if you are camping and you have your family with you, uh, you can, you can tear off your meal ticket tab to, to get your meal. Um, but they also will take money Great. you know, as well. So, okay. awesome. so they can, anybody we can love a good food truck. Right. And, and you do. said quesadillas in pizza. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's gourmet, pretty good. Gourmet quesadillas. With a big tall Coke. Doesn't that yeah. sound like a perfect post-race meal? Probably other people would like a beer, but right. Yeah. <laughs> We'll take Cokes. Right, right. That's fine. All right. So hold on to the meal tickets. Meal tickets are important. You'll find it on your bib. That's one thing that I would like pin to myself to make sure that I have right. that on me. Yeah, so you don't want to lose it. No, you don't want to lose your meal tickets. So it's going to be great. Go out there and have a great time. We are excited to see you at this Bryce, Bryce Canyon Ultra. And uh, yeah, well, Lyle, thanks for coming in and chatting with me today. And we'll do it again. And make sure if you want to come run with us again, we just released our Antelope Canyon dates that is going to be march 13th and 14th 20 12th and 13th 12th and 13th 2022 so if you want to come and do antelope canyon antelope canyon sheesh i mean i say blyce canyon is amazing antelope course man yeah our, our blow your socks our, off our antelope canyon race is is very they're they're all unique in their they own are, way. They are. They're all different and unique, but that's a great time of year, especially if you live someplace where you can train the winter. Um, so Antelope Canyon is, we've got the dates out for that, so watch for registration to open. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us, and we will see you on the trail at the Bryce Canyon Ultra 2021. Bye.
You've been listening to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We love your feedback. Email podcast at vacationraces.com with comments, concerns, or stories you'd love to share. Make sure to watch for more episodes coming soon to vacationraces.com. This episode was produced by Colleen Rue in the Festival Sound Studio. For information about music licensing, contact Dane at vacationraces.com.